normally I could just uh, take string from the uh, electrical conduit at the top of this trellis and bring the string down here and have the beans crawl up like that. Um, but I would need to have that string in the ground somehow. And since there's already beans here, I'm just going to put um, this rod in the ground and let the beans go up this rod. And I just also found some aphids with the ants trying to farm the aphids again over here. So I'm going to have to wash those aphids off. Well, so much for yesterday, only having three. I guess I got quite a lot today. One, two, three. Some big ones, too. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. This kind of deformed one here, but still edible. Oh, eleven. 11 today. So, so three yesterday, 11 today. I think that the yellowing on this leaf and on several of the leaves here on the cucumbers is just due to poor soil health. I don't think it's a disease or anything or a virus or anything. All the rest of these leaves, especially up here at the top, are nice and healthy. But the soil here probably just isn't great because, uh, number one, because, well, we just, this is the second round of cucumbers in the same spot. And we didn't really amend the soil with anything. Um, but also just because the soil hasn't really been amended by anything great, um, kind of ever. Which is the whole point of me trying to make some good compost so I can amend the soil in as many places as possible. And over time, hopefully, all of this uh, any place where we're growing stuff, I'll be able to amend with compost. This fig tree right here has just grown like crazy. It's like nearly six feet tall now. And I think when my dad planted it earlier this year, it was like, I don't know, like two and a half or three feet tall maybe, if even that. So it's like doubled its height this season. It's really crazy. I've never even eaten a fig like that. I've eaten Fig Newtons, so I don't even know what these taste like. They're not ripe yet. I don't know if they will get ripe in this first year being planted. I have no idea. The butterflies and the bees love those. Mexican sunflower, Mexican sunflowers, Mexican sunflower plants. And the marigolds, which is tons of, uh, tons of butterflies and bees around here. If only the butterflies would come eat all the negative insects. beans didn't wrap around stay wrapped around the, the pole I made them silly beans I'm 
This one's falling all the way down. Come on now. I gave you something to climb up. Earlier I was looking online for to see if there's anywhere around me that has like organic straw or hay that I could buy to use as a brown material for the compost. <laughs> I literally couldn't find anything. Like all these websites and these people that are selling hay or straw, they don't even say anything about being organic or they don't even give much detail about the process of how they grow their the crops that they turn into hay. I guess I could just call people, but uh, I don't know. I really need a brown material though. And I was thinking about it. I mean, I can chip up stuff and that's fine. It's just not an ideal brown material because it is woody. There are woody bits in, the, in what I chip up in my chipper shredder. And the woody bits are just gonna take longer to decompose, but I mean, it, still, it, it still will work and I'm still gonna use it for that. Um, I'm thinking maybe I could just put some grass to the side, like there's actually a pile over here. Hello, butterfly. Like this grass right here um, is actually, as you can see, brown because the nitrogen has left uh, and been probably soaked into the ground underneath it. And so now all that's left is just carbon. So I can actually use this as a brown and I probably will do that. The thing is, um, grass doesn't really, it, when there's a lot of grass in there, what I'm finding is that it just mats up really easily. And actually yesterday, on one of the videos I was watching, the person also mentioned that, that if you're gonna use fresh clippings from grass, you probably wanna make like a thin layer and under that be brown or some sort of manure or something. And then on top of that, another brown uh, to, to kind of sandwich that, that green layer of grass clippings because the grass clippings just, they just mat up and I still have like clumps of grass clippings in the compost, my compost pile that's um, almost done. There's still like clumps of stuff of grass in it. And that's just not ideal. So I'm not sure what would happen if I do a whole lot of green grass clippings with um, a decent amount of brown grass clippings. Like will it do the same thing? So here's the thing, I literally did not understand what a carbon to nitrogen ratio was until today. When things are like a 40 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. I understood what that meant, that there's 40 parts carbon for every one part nitrogen. Um, but my misunderstanding was that when I was adding greens and browns, if something was green, and even though this makes no sense, but I just hadn't thought about it all the way through. But when something was green, a green, in my, br in my head, that meant it was more parts nitrogen than carbon, which makes no sense and is not true at all. So like the grass clippings are like 20 to one. They have a 21 carbon to nitrogen ratio. So there's still more carbon, 20 parts carbon for every one part nitrogen. But it, that is still considered a green because that is way more nitrogen than let's say wood chips. So the wood chips are like I think 300 or 400 to one. So 300 parts carbon, 100 part, one part nitrogen. 
Um, and so all this time when I've been doing research and people are saying, oh, you want like basically like a 40 to one carbon nitrogen ratio in your compost pile. In my brain, I didn't even understand what they were saying because I was like, that's way more carbon than nitrogen. And that is so stupid. It makes no sense. I don't know how I just now realized this. But all that means really is that if I'm putting a lot of, if I put, let's say I put one whole bag of grass clippings. So that's a decent amount of 20 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. Well then to get that to 40 to one, I mean, I don't know how mathematically it actually works out, but you know, you would need the same amount, the same amount of a brown material as that green material. And that brown material would need to be what? Like 60 to one or 80 to one, whatever carbon nitrogen ratio to balance out the 20 to one from the grass clippings to get it to an overall 40 to one in the compost heap. Um, and I, I don't know how I just now realized that, but um, so with that in mind, I've got to come up with a way to kind of at least roughly get compost piles to around 40 to one carbon nitrogen. And it isn't necessary. It's it, anything will, will, will decompose and compost down. It's just that, you know, if you want it to go fast, then they say, people say like 40 to one ratio um, is a good way to go. Now, currently in this one, in this pile, I think it was probably not 40 to one. But honestly, I don't really know what it was. But what I do know, what I do know though, is that this one, the one I'm building, has way more parts green right now. And just then when I was turning it, um, I could even, I can smell the, I'm not really sure what exactly the smell is, but it's the smell of there being too much green. If you have a good balance, there's not really gonna be any smell. Um, whereas if you have just a bunch of green, which is the high nitrogen concentration, then when it starts breaking down, it's gonna release different gases and what I don't know whatever it is and those things cause smell now some people say they don't mind the smell and so they can have high nitrogen compost bin compost heap and it's fine I don't really mind the smell but I would just I want I would like to have an ideal ratio so that it will go it'll decompose quickly and also maintain as much microbial and bacteria good bacteria life as possible while also getting hot enough to kill off the bad bacteria and the and the um, pathogens that you don't want to go into your soil. So it's really like a work of art. It's really um, a skill that you have to kind of hone and develop. And that makes it fun. You know, that makes it like a challenge. And the challenges are fun. It's like, how do I, if I continue to learn and continue to do this, can I can I perfect it? Can I get a, a perfect compost heap? Which most some people say isn't even possible to have a perfect compost heap. But um, that's the journey anyway. That is a baby rabbit. So the rabbit's bred somewhere. And that was a, that's a baby rabbit. I'm not sure where he, he just ran. He was right here. He ran down into here underneath the stairs. I haven't seen the adult rabbits in a while, so I don't know if they're still around or what, but baby rabbits are cute. Unfortunately, he's not allowed to eat my food though. Oh, the reason I came out here was I need to water all of the sprouts, the sproutlings. And the easiest way to do that is I'm gonna be on my, on the hose thing. There's like a mister setting. And I'm gonna use that to do it. I think that'll be the easiest way. <laughs> 